Well, hey there guys and gals, Eugene here. Uh, today I'm making a video on home boot kombucha. I'm gonna try to keep it brief, but it's really hard, I think. I think this is gonna be more of a series than anything. Uh, but today I just wanted to make a video and maybe a, actually a series of a couple videos about making your own home brewed kombucha. I think it's, um, it's kind of a little bit of an art and everybody develops their own style to how to make it. I just wanted to share what we do here with my wife and our family and um, our results a little bit and just show you the process. So just a brief introduction, kombucha um, and also there's June. Um, both of them are, you know, you can buy them at the store. I think the stuff that you buy at the store though is very different than what you make at home. Um, it's kind of like anything, like homemade is a lot better often than what you can get um, in the store. So if you try kombucha at the store and you're like, man, this is gross, I recommend you find somebody that makes home brewed and try theirs. But not everybody probably home brews it the same either. You threw an apple. <gasps> you threw an apple? <laughs> How dare you? You know, there's probably gonna be a series because there's so much stuff to include. I'm gonna try to break it down into about three or four videos, I think, but we'll see. Uh, the first one's gonna be just about an introduction, how to brew it, well, how to start, you know, starting your own home brewed kombucha, what you're gonna need, where to get the SCOBY, how much it will be to kind of get into it if you really wanna do this uh, day in, day out, or like kind of week in, week out, I guess. Uh, and then the quantity you wanna make as well will matter. And then, you know, the first video will be about how to kind of set everything up. Here's for you, making me some kombucha. Here's a bottle, here's a bottle. Put the kombucha in the bottle, okay? The second one will be about the first fermentation, so making the tea, making the fermentation, um, the first time in this jar here. No, that's <laughs> You have to make it first the right way. Okay, I'll show you, I'll show you how, okay? And then the third video will be about flavoring it. And then the fourth video will probably be about June, which is a little bit of a different tea. So kombucha is black tea with just cane sugar. And in a, you know, it has caffeine, um, you use sugar and that's the base. That's what you brew in the first primary fermentation. Um, June is green tea and honey. It tastes a lot different. It's kind of a refined drink. And I think it's actually easier to make than kombucha. Uh, we make both of them. So that'll be the fourth video. Well, like I said, right now we're just gonna talk about all the details about how to get started with kombucha and you know what materials you're going to need to purchase how much things roughly cost and you know everything you need to get started and before i do that i will say that there um you know there are different levels of doing this i guess you know you can do this just in a very simple you know mason jar that's or, or like a canning pickle jar like a like a gallon um, you can do it that way and just start out and that can work and I, I kind of started with that but I pretty quickly went to this because I think you got a lot more fine control with um, you know having a spout and so on and so there's just different ways to do it different ways to kind of approach it I'm just gonna talk about what we did um, and so that's just there out front for you to understand so you know what are you gonna need for this well um, I think the most important thing you're gonna need is the SCOBY so you can see it in here in the future videos you'll see it more up close uh, what is a SCOBY? A SCOBY is a uh, it's, it's an acronym that stands for a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast and has multiple bacteria in there um, and you know they kind of grow into this gelatinous uh, yeah I guess it's the best way to describe it kind of structure um, that almost looks like tissue but it's just a it's a culture of, of bacteria and yeast um, that will ferment the tea and it needs from my understanding it needs to have caffeine and it needs to have sugar um, although you know perhaps it could be fine without the caffeine piece um, I'm not sure uh, although people say that if you keep brewing it or fermenting it longer the caffeine goes away so I think that that is true that it you that it uses that caffeine for something um, so that's the SCOBY that's kind of the most important thing you're gonna need uh, without that obviously this thing wouldn't work so where do you get that there's a couple ways to do it I would recommend just buying it. It's pretty cheap buying it from somebody who's gonna send it to you already kind of start it up. That's gonna save you a lot of time and it'll work just fine. Uh, and I'll leave links in a description for that. 
So please do check it out. The description is going to have a lot of information in it um, in terms of recipe, where to buy things, links to different sorts of things. So please do check that out for more information. But like I said, you can buy it. That's what I would recommend. Although um, in my case, I actually got it from somebody else. And so if you know somebody who's making kombucha, you can always ask them to give you just a little bit and it, you, know, you can multiply it very easily. Um, or the other option is just totally make it yourself from store-bought kombucha. And I haven't done this myself, so I will, you know, put that disclaimer in there. But from what I read about it, it's pretty easy. And briefly to explain it, what you would do is you would get a unpasteurized raw kombucha from the store. Most, you know, groceries or like nice grocery stores will have this. And then you, you basically take that and uh, pour it into a larger container and then add some fresh tea into there, black, you know, sweetened tea. And I'll tell you about the recipe in just a second. And then you let it sit there um, for multiple days, sometimes maybe a week and a half or two weeks, and it will start to form this scoby on top. It takes some time, so you have to be patient. Um, but it's going to start to form a film, and then it's going to just kind of start to grow and get thicker. And that's it. So that's one way to do it. The other way is you, you actually get the tea and a little bit of the scoby from somebody. What I actually got was tea from somebody else. Um, and it started to form a SCOBY. So it was very similar to what you do with store-bought, but you got to make sure that it's not pasteurized. Um, and after you do that, there's a couple things, a couple little tricky pieces to that. Mainly, what you need to make sure is that you do not add too much fresh tea. So say you're making this uh, SCOBY out of, you know, a cup of tea, right? You do not want to add a gallon of fresh tea to it uh, to make to make a scoby out of that. You want to actually leave the concentrated tea in there and maybe double it. So add another cup. So if you have, you know, a cup of the starter tea, you want to maybe add just a cup of the new fresh tea um, because you want it to acidify and that helps with the growth and the multiplication of the, the scoby. Um, and also keeps a little bit acidic and keeps other, other bacteria from surviving in it. Uh, so you don't, you don't want it to get, you know, contaminated that way. So that would be a recommendation. I kind of recommend having no more than one eighth starter tea to new tea. So one eighth starter tea to seven eighths new tea. And that's kind of what we practice with our brewing. So I'll show you that in a minute. So that's the SCOBY. There's multiple ways to do it, um, multiple ways to get it. Again, if you got it from the store, just put it in a jar, wait for it to grow, then add more tea. Once it's gotten pretty, you know, pretty uh, acidified and fermented, then you'd again add eight times that amount or seven times that amount of tea in there and then wait again and just let it grow for a little bit. And that first tea that it's going to produce, that uh, the, the kombucha in there, is going to be pretty gross. Um, that's what I found with the first like one or two fermentations when you're getting started. It's just going to taste gross, so just toss it. Um, you know, toss it, leave a little bit, so that then you can refill the jar again to about, you know, six to eight times the amount that you had left. The next piece is going to be um, you know, jars, or actually the, the next most important piece I think is going to be tea, honestly. And for the black tea or kombucha, you basically want to use just black tea, just straight up simple black tea. Um, I initially started with tea bags, but found that I got better results with getting loose leaf, really, you know, more higher quality tea. And what I recommend for tea, and this is what we have been doing for the past, you know, over a year now, is just going to Winko Foods and getting royal breakfast tea. And it's, uh, it's really good. It tastes very nice. And that's what we've been using for all of our brewing. So uh, just go into Winko. It's in the bulk department. Um, you know, it, it, it's a little bit spendy, but it's nothing for the bottle of kombucha that you get. You know, it turns out to be, I think I calculated, maybe 30 to 50 cents per bottle maximum. If that, maybe even less, probably like 10 cents. Um, so that's the tea that we use. And then the recipe that we use is one and a half teaspoons of loose leaf tea to a cup of brewed tea. So if you're going, if you're trying to make a liter of tea, which would be a cup, I'm considering 250 milliliters. By the way, all of this will be in the description. 250 milliliters of tea is one cup. That would be, you know, one and a half teaspoons of loose leaf tea for that when you brew. And then, um, you know, you just want to make sure that you, you kind of just multiply that out to whatever you're doing. Uh, I'll talk about how we do this in the second video about the first kind of fermentation before we do the second fermentation. Um, but right now we're just talking about pure setup. So that's the tea, that's roughly the recipe. When you're gonna be multiplying your kombucha to growing it initially, um, that's what you, I would use, that same recipe. 
Um, and then once your, once your uh, SCOBY starts to grow with that, then you can transition to the second part of this video, which is gonna be all about that first big fermentation you know, of the kombucha that you're actually gonna use to make the second fermentation and make it carbonated. The third piece is everything else. You know, what are you gonna use? So um, sugar, I just use straight up cane sugar, white, just the cheapest stuff. I'm sure you can probably go into like the raw sugar and all of that. Um, it's gonna cost you a little more. Um, we just use plain cane sugar and it works just fine. And the next piece is what you're gonna need is, is you know, jars. So we have the main fermentation vessel primary fermentation vessel. And this one is actually um, an 11 liter or 2.9 gallon beverage dispenser or beverage, yeah, beverage dispenser from Costco. It's made by Mason. I don't think they sell it anymore. When they did sell it, we got an awesome deal and I got multiple of these um, for $25 with the stand. Now what I would recommend, it doesn't have to be this nice. It can be just, you know, another, I would recommend a glass jar um, because, you know, if sometimes metal will get corroded by the acidity. Um, and then I would also recommend a nice, nice spout to be available on the bottom because that really, really helps with pouring it into bottles, um, with tasting it to make sure that it's ready in the later stages. And you don't have to tilt it, you don't have to pour it, you don't have to mess with the SCOBY. You can just leave it as it is, pour it off, pour the tea on top, and you're done. It's very simple and it looks really nice when it's brewing. Um, and it's a big jar so you can make you know, whatever amount you want in one jar and uh, it's straightforward. What I would also recommend when you're doing this is to always leave a piece or, or a little jar of uh, tea with a SCOBY in a little small jar somewhere away from the main one. Um, just to make sure that in case this, something happens to this, you'll have a backup and I'll explain that uh, in later videos, uh, how to avoid getting things messed up. I've never had this fail yet uh, in about two years now. So um, that's, that's what you're gonna need in terms of the, the big jar for the fermentation. Uh, what's really nice about this one as well is it has graduated markings on it every liter and that really helps with just gauging how much I have left, how much, you know, how many bottles I need to make. And this happens to have, again, liter markers, which these are liter bottles. And so I know exactly what I have, exactly how much I have left, and it just makes things way easier. So I'd recommend that. Um, the other thing is, you, you know, after you have made the tea here, is you're going to need secondary fermentation bottles. And these are really nice quality. I think they're about $5 a bottle for the big ones and maybe four or $3 for the small ones. These are liter bottles, 32 ounce. And these are 16 ounce uh, half liter bottles. What you need to have present in these is a nice sealable top that can withstand pressure uh, with carbonation, like pretty high pressure. So make sure you don't get decorative bottles, but you actually get bottles that are designed to hold pressure. Um, nice thick glass because I know people have had their bottles blow. So do not get a cheap bottle, I'd recommend. Um, you can also use, you don't have to use these. You can actually just use you know, other nice uh, pressurized bottles um, that are glass from other kombucha that you maybe you've bought um, that has the screw down lids and all of that. Those work pretty well as well. So you can use any of those. Um, basically glass with a nice pressure seal that's not gonna leak. And I recommend getting the transparent bottles. They're just kind of black or, or brown bottles. Uh, the reason I want transparent is because, again, I can just see what's going on. I can shine a flashlight, see if the fermentation's happening, if it's bubbling. Just way easier to kind of keep an eye on things. So you're gonna need these bottles for the second fermentation piece. Um, and again, we've used these multiple times and they have not ever failed us. Um, and again, I will leave uh, links in the description for both the jar potential other options for the jar in terms of other spouts or combinations with the jar and spout that you can get as well as bottles. Um, as well as, you know, if maybe I find some good tea on Amazon or other places that you can buy for loose leaf tea. But I'm just saying what we've used and what I recommend. Um, and that's kind of the most important things. And I also will have in the description um, the recipe for the, for the tea. Um, beyond that, you know, you're gonna just, like I explained, you're gonna grow your SCOBY. Um, as soon as you get a little bit of a SCOBY and you get that tea starting to get nice and fermented, um, you're ready, you're ready to make a big batch and go for it. Um, you know, and, I, and it kinda just grows and then eventually you're there and it, and it tastes good. And I, now what I would also say is, you know, you're gonna have to have a little bit of patience. There's a little bit of an art to it and you're gonna have to finagle things just a little bit um, there's a lot of variables and mainly probably the most important variable um, 
is you know the strength of your SCOBY, how much SCOBY you have, as well as the temperature of the room where you're fermenting this. So um, I have a little thermometer and I'll put a little link in the description for that just on the side here. It's a little stick on thermometer. And that tells me, you know, the temperature of the room. And I roughly know, you know, how much time it takes at that temperature. That's especially important if you can't taste it, um, if you don't have a spout. That's not as important for me, you know, because I can actually just taste it and I can tell, okay, this is good. Um, and if you can't, then, then that's what you would need to have is just a little stick on thermometer. Um, and I think that's pretty much it, guys. So, you know, grow your, grow your SCOBY. Um, and then we'll talk about doing the first fermentation in the next part. So again, this is part one. Part two will be about making the first big batch of tea and all the little details about that and the recipe and how to actually make it happen. And then the third part will be about bottling it and flavoring it, and then we'll go from there. So um, if you guys do have any questions, please leave them down in the comments section. I'll try to get back to you. And again, check the description for the recipes and links to all of the things that I talked about. And those will be affiliate links for, to Amazon. So I will get a, we'll get a little bit of a bonus if you guys use those links to buy anything. Um, they'll just kick back a little bit to us as well. Man, is that good. Mmm.